Okay. Jay's Tunnel here with Dr. Donna Shaver and Cynthia Rubio, plus uh, my family, Catherine, uh, Jack, and Parker. And we are here at the National Seashore and releasing uh, baby Kemp's Ridley sea turtles that just came out. They just hatched. Today, uh, releasing 144 baby sea turtles and these are from uh, two different nests and so anybody familiar with the uh, Padre Island National Seashore let me get over here for you um, these were found at mile markers 18 and uh, 19 and, and so and I just want to cut in just for a second and, and uh, Jace will start in again this is Dr. Donna Shaver on Dr. Donna Live at 645 on Ridley TV, bringing you the state sea turtle of Texas, the Texas Ridley sea turtle, and uh, highlighting the more than 40 years of binational multi-agency coordination that we've been conducting to try to help save this species so that it can be enjoyed by future generations and others can go wow when they see the assets for the first time and marvel at, at their beauty their beauty and uh, fascinated with their behaviors of all the way from the hatchlings to the adults when they come up in nest. This morning we're releasing hatchlings that uh, have actually uh, gone into their frenzy. We don't hold turtles for show and tell. These turtles are released as soon as they enter their very active state called a frenzy and uh, they're brought down to the beach and set free and this is the very same stretch of beach where we release the hatchlings from the translocation project where we tried to form a secondary nesting colony of Kemp's Ridley turtles as a safeguard against extinction so that if a political or an environmental catastrophe was to occur in Mexico there'd be a safe area where Kemp's Ridley's could nest and be protected and the National Seashore, a very special area to the Tunnel family and to many people, and myself included, uh, was selected as a location for this because Kemp's really is a native nester here, and we are the longest stretch of undeveloped Bear Island Beach in the United States. And so we could protect the nesting turtles, the nests, and the habitat from development. The project was envisioned by pioneers from Corpus Christi. In the uh, 1970s, Dr. Archie Carr and Dr. Henry Hildebrand were looking around for where did the Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle nest? No one knew. They thought perhaps it might even be a hybrid. Well, in 19, oh, excuse me, 19, in the 1960s. So in the uh, 1963, Dr. Henry Hildebrand found a very famous film, it later became famous, a very important film that showed an estimated 40,000 Kemp's Ridley turtles nesting on this one stretch of beach at Rancho Nuevo, Mexico. And so the, the searching for that beach, trying to discover where these turtles nested, uh, which had gone on for decades. Finally, once that film was discovered, then it was known, and it was all due to Dr. Hildebrand discovering that film made in 1947, in the early 1960s, and showing it at a herpetological conference in Austin, Texas. And Henry Hildebrand was from Flower Bluff, Texas, and worked at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and was a good friend of your your father's, of Jason's father who is a tremendous icon in the conservation community in the Texas uh, area and even the whole Gulf of Mexico. So Dr. Hildebrand happened to be a neighbor of Robert Whistler who was the chief naturalist at Padre Island National Seashore and they talked about the plight of the Camps Ridley and how it nested here historically and wouldn't it be really great to have this secondary nesting colony so you don't have all your eggs in one basket 
must have this safe area in the U.S. in case a political or an environmental catastrophe was to occur in Mexico, uh, these, these uh, turtles would have this safe haven. And back then, when the project was envisioned in the 1970s, they did not know what those factors might be. And today, when we look, look at it, we could say, well, uh, drug cartels, because it's a, a very active threat down there on the beaches in Tamaulipas, Mexico, where this main nesting beach is, and sea level rise and other factors. So those, those pioneers were very forward thinking and Dr. Hildebrand and Robert Missler prepared an action plan uh, with the help of our region, National Park Service Regional Office and brought in folks from other agencies and that blossomed into the overall binational recovery plan for the campus Reading sea turtle. So we in Corpus Christi have a lot to be proud of. We've had a major role in the conservation of this species for decades. And uh, Dr. Thane Wibbles, who's looked at the history a lot, said, if the actions of a few key people hadn't happened, we might have lost this species. So hats off to Dr. Hildebrand and Bob Whistler and getting these things started so that we have a chance of saving these animals. And they were almost lost in the blink of an eye within one generation. When I was going through my dad's belongings and, and missing him, I, I looked at his ring from the Naval Academy. And the year that he graduated was 1947. He graduated the year that that very famous film was made when the population was robust. And here comes his daughter to try to save the species in 1980, graduated my undergrad school in 1981, so literally one human generation, the population crashed. And when I was young, 20 years old, my first time here, first time seeing the ocean, Pond Round National Seashore, Camps for the Turtles, I fell in love and I felt like it was our, our moral obligation to try to save this species that man almost decimated from the uh, overharvest of eggs, that's the supposed aphrodisiac and large scale taking, uh, and then also incidental capture of juveniles and adults in fisheries operations. And so we've been working ever since with many, many partners uh, to try to recover the species and form this secondary nesting colony. And we're really happy about strides that have been made, increases that we've had and the opportunity for you to get to see these. When I first came here in 1980, as a 20-year-old, we were lucky to find a nest every three years. And so this was a rare thing, but the numbers have grown. And the low point for the Kemp's Ridley population was only 702 nests worldwide in 1985, down from the 40,000 in one day. And in 2017, we had 353 Kemp's Ridley nests found in Texas. So we really have the seeds of possibility for that secondary nesting colony like those pioneers envisioned. So, well, hats and off. Well, thanks to the, all the work that you've done all these uh, decades. And uh, really the, the partnership is key that you mentioned. And uh, it takes a village, it, as they say. So absolutely takes a village and I'm so glad that you're here because the uh, the Mission Aransas National Estuarine Research Reserve that you are director of which is the umbrella over the ARC the Animal Rehabilitation Keep and your nesting and stranding programs is a critical partner in this work and can you talk to us a little bit about what you do there yeah, so uh, during the nesting season from April 1st to mid-July, um, you know, we have the uh, volunteers that go out with our uh, partners from Friends of the Ark, and uh, uh, they go out uh, once a day, Mustang Island, and uh, a couple times a week on uh, San Jose Island, and look for uh, nests. And then once we find those, we excavate the eggs and then bring them to uh, you, uh, Donna, and uh, uh, you incubate them, and then uh, 55 days later, get to do something like this. <laughs> but then, 
The other uh, part of the uh, partnership that we have is with the rehabilitation of sea turtles. And uh, so uh, Tony Amos started the Amos Rehabilitation Keep uh, back in uh, the late 1970s. And so uh, since then, you know, uh, you and Tony uh, worked very closely. Anytime you all find an uh, injured sea turtle, um, by any animal, uh, I know Tony would be there and uh, uh, take it to the facility there at the University of Texas Marine Science Institute. Uh, rehabilitate it with the hopes of uh, having it released again. And you guys have a great success rate with your rehabilitation efforts and I want to add that my very first day working down here there was a live stranded green turtle that was found that we brought up to that rehab facility. Oh really? My <laughs> very first day so uh, the, the partnership has been there all along through the years and uh, it, large proportion of the turtles that are found stranded here end up going to the ark for care where we know they're in great hands and there's great survivorship and and tony amos uh, who founded the ark was so giving and compassionate to these animals and made sure that they got great care hurricane harvey put a devastating blow on your facility but you built it back even bigger and better than ever. And Tony would be so grateful for what you've done, Jace, and your leadership in making this such a success now. Uh, he left it in very good hands with you, so thank you. Well, I, I think it's all, uh, thanks for that. Um, you know, when Tony first started the ARC, he had uh, seven animals come in that first year. And uh, now we average about 1,500 animals that come in. <laughs> Goodness. So it's a, quite an undertaking. And so the, the staff, uh, you know, Alicia Walker at the ARC, uh, who's uh, running the day-to-day -day operations and uh, making sure everything happens. And then all the staff, uh, huge thanks to them. And then, like I said, Friends of the ARC uh, could not be done without the Friends of the ARC. And volunteers are huge participants in your project, huge. just like ours. Yeah, we the, couldn't do our work without our volunteers. That's we what, yeah. love them. Yeah, the, without volunteers, uh, the ARC would not happen. <laughs> Maybe I'll try to get down here and looking back towards you. <clears throat> I know y'all want to see all the sea turtles. This is how it's done. 55 days of incubation then they come out here on the beach and these little guys make their way all the way down let me see if I can get a better angle for y'all here and that's Jack with the GoPro there Let's see one that's going. Here, uh, stay back. Let me get get one. Now, this is what y'all like to see, I'm sure. Now, if y'all have any questions or comments as these turtles make their way to freedom, uh, put them in the comments section. Uh, we've got folks, this is going to be live so we can answer all your questions as we go along. Um, look at that little buddy there. Now these are Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtles. Let's go up a little bit closer so you can see one that's making it to the water. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but there he goes.
Jack, back up. Back up, Jack. Okay, here's Jack. Doing a little video. Okay. <laughs> you say anything to the camera? Um, so this is, um, <laughs> It doesn't do you happen. Like, do you lot. like seeing uh, all these turtles yeah. down there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't happen a lot, so this is a real special event. Yeah, cool. So we're glad to be able to reach you through social media. This is my first week doing any Facebook Lives like this, so I'm learning as I go along, and I appreciate you listening in. And I appreciate your support for this work. We couldn't do this work without the support of so many, and assistance of so many organizations that have funded the efforts through the years, including, of course, the National Park Service, but many others in the United States and Mexico, are in the local area, and volunteers. We have about 100 volunteers in the local community every year that help us out, just like the plan does with his efforts for San Jose and Mustang Islands. Uh, Jace's father is Dr. West Tunnel, and he is a tremendously important figure in Texas in the shaping of conservation that has gone on here for the last couple of decades when his students, or three decades probably, from his students. When did his first students graduate, Jace? Well, he started in 1974. Oh my, okay. So. 50, 50 then. <laughs> For the last five, probably, right. five generations, time flies. Uh, <laughs> so he, Dr. Tunnel, everybody loved to take the classes with Dr. Tunnel over at uh, what was called at the time, Corpus Christi State University. And Dr. Tunnel formed the Center for Coastal Studies and then was instrumental also in the formation of the Heart Research Institute. Many graduate students and many undergraduate students were inspired by Dr. Tunnel and then went on to run conservation programs in, in Texas and elsewhere, as well as become professors all across the United States, handing that torch.